Hello there, and welcome to this series on musical electronics for Arduino, created for the students at Saturday Academy. I am Will Patillo, and in the last lesson, we uh, created a uh, um, script here that can play a single song. Now we're going to expand it a little bit so that it can play uh, multiple different songs uh, fairly easily, and uh, create the beginnings of our own little private song library set up another header file, kind of like what I used for all the pitches right here um, for songs, uh, so that as we add more and more of these, they're not going to fill up more and more space uh, inside of uh, our main code right here. Um, so I'll cue uh, that by creating a new tab right here, so clicking this little down arrow, new tab, and this creates a new file, and I'll just call it songs.h. Click OK, and now I have a new file right there. And then I'm going to take these and move that over into songs. Now I'm going to be having multiple songs here, and all of them are going to have a note count, they're going to have a set of notes, they're going to have a time signature, and so these are I don't. I wouldn't. I don't want to have to come up with different variable names for uh, every single one, or to say things like uh, chime note count and then a different one. You know, different song name underscore. That's going to get uh, kind of annoying. So I'm going to use a little uh, structs for these uh, as a way of just keeping things a little organized, uh, so that I can and, and also so I can use the same uh, variable names repeatedly. So uh, just actually generalize this a little bit more. I'm going to change chime to notes. Uh, note count and time signature can stay as they are. Actually, since I'm here, I'm going to get rid of this underscore and just use the um, camel case right here where I uh, capitalize the first letter of each word after the first one uh, so that I stay consistent with my naming conventions. All right, so now I have these variables that are in songs, and now I'm going to wrap this in a struct. Uh, I'll call this struct, and then I'll take the name of my song. Uh, so I'll just call this uh, simple chime, and open, uh, set up some braces here, some curly braces. Uh, and uh, also, I'm going to need to put a semicolon at the end of my braces here. Since I'm playing multiple songs here, this play song is going to need to receive some arguments so that these will all can all be uh, variables. Um, so play song needs to know note count, it needs to know time signature, and it needs to know um, the notes that are being involved. Uh, yeah, that's what they're called, the chime. So I'll just uh, pass those in here int note count, int uh, notes, and then uh, put in the square braces to indicate that it's receiving an array right here, and int time signature. Alright, so now this play song is now capable of uh, receiving all this information, and none of this has to change except that now that I'm using this uh, different spelling format, I'll need to change it here. All right, anywhere else did I use it? Oh, I think that was the only spot. Oh, also, instead of chime, I'm calling it the more general notes. And that same goes over here. Uh, note duration has an underscore, but I'll just leave that alone. Um, and yeah, that should be all I need. Now, when I call play song, I need to pass in the uh, information that it needs. So right here, just keeping things uh, as they are, um, I'm going to pass in these three variables. And the way that I get them when they're inside of a struct is like this. Um, first, I will create an instance of the struct. Uh, so that will be um, simple chime, let's call, it, uh, let's call it song. And then inside of play song, I'll say song.notecount song dot notes and song dot time signature right so over in songs I've have this 
declared custom data structure called Simple Chime. And right here, when I, I get that button press, I create an instance of this struct, and I call it song. Then I access the note count of that instance, which is eight. I access all the notes uh, in that song, which is all of these, and the time signature, which is all of these. Uh, one other thing I'll definitely need is up here, I need to include this file. So include songs.h. Okay, get some of those extra lines. And let's see if this verifies. Oh, right. Uh, so here, when I'm declaring an array and putting values in it uh, right off the bat, uh, I need to say how big the array is so our Arduino knows how much memory to allocate to it. So these have eight notes in it, so I say int notes eight, int time signatures eight. Uh, so that way, this, this creates a array with eight, with a uh, space for eight integer values, and then I immediately fill them. Okay, you can do that for both of these. Make sure these numbers match your note count, your notes, and your time signature. Okay, that's good. And uh, one thing you might also be wondering is, since I'm putting this eight here, isn't it a little bit redundant to have eight in these different places? Actually, why do I even need the note count variable, note count variable when I can just have all this right here? Um, that's because at least in Arduino anyway, accessing array lengths isn't really possible. Uh, you know, other languages you can just say you know, array name dot length and you'll get the length of the array. That's not available uh, in, in this context. Uh, now you can uh, say do something like int note count equals, you can use the size of function and compare the divide the size of the entire notes array by uh, the size of the first element of that array, kind of like this. Yeah, this will get me the size in bytes of a single note, and this will get the size of the entire array in bytes, and then divide uh, one by the other, and I can. Uh, calculate what my note count is and then uh, pass that in. Um, unfortunately, I would not be able to just use this line down here because when I pass an array, it gets uh, passed by reference. That is, it's just passing its address rather than the actual array itself. And so song.notes is just going to be an address. Uh, so, it, so is this, actually, by the way. Um, so this will be two bytes by two bytes, and it'll, it'll say that the note count is one uh, if I try to calculate it down here. Um, so that you know, it would be great if I could do that, um, but I can't. And if I, I can put it up here and uh, then just use this note count right here, in which case I don't have to uh, include it over there, uh, but since I'm going to be copying and pasting these lines a bunch of times, uh, I didn't want to copy-paste all this stuff. I thought it would be easier to just put it in the struct directly. So a little bit of a digression right there. So get rid of those uh, extra lines. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, and now I upload this. And it works just the same as before. However, now I can copy this, paste it down like here, and I can uh, make a new song. Uh, and just to keep things simple, I'm just going to take the same song and lower it by an octave. So change all these numbers down by one. Okay, verify that. And now I can change the song simply by changing this this right here, simple chime song, to low chime song. And now it's a different song. Uh, I can and I can bring it right back again. 
just like that. And this will still work if I make additional songs that are different lengths um, of notes, of different setups of time signatures, different melodies, of course. Uh, you have all the flexibility that we had before. Uh, it's just now we have our songs in a separate file. We can make as many of them as we like, and we can swap out which song we're using uh, just by changing one little word right here. Uh, now, one thing you might want to try expanding into, and uh, just, this would be a good task to challenge yourself a little and to see if you can figure it out, is when we get this button press, rather than just playing this song, we can have another if statement. And in here, we'll check the state of some variable. So, for example, uh, every time you we have like a state variable that's a number that starts at a zero. Every time you press the button, the state increments up by one. And then uh, if the state is zero, then we play the simple chime. If the state is one, we play the low chime. If the state is two, we play a different song. Once we get to the end, loop back, loop the state back to the beginning uh, so that the end result will be that you can play a different song every time you press the button and, and, uh, and loop through them. Um, and yeah, just one additional hint you can have is you'll have some if statements or maybe a, a switch uh, if you want it to look a little better. And then inside each of those, you would just have something like this. Inside each condition, you know, you'd have, in case zero, you'd have these two lines. In case one, you'd have these two lines. Yeah, there's a bit of repetition, but you know that's okay. So that is all for this this lesson. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm Will Patillo, signing out.